right, coffee beans. How's it brewing? Happy New Year! It is officially 2022, and this year is going to be a good year. To kick off the new year, I have a special two-in-one craft kit for you guys because I'm a little late on my craft kitsune boxes. I have two. I'm a bit behind, so why not combine them into one unboxing and crafting video? This is the November one. Should be dragons. Let's see here. Oh, yeah! Okay, okay, it's starting to come back to me a little bit. I'm kind of remembering what's in here. So these little guys are completely opaque. They're not transparent containers. So that if you mix up a custom UV resin color, you can save it in here and that way the UV light from the sun or whatever you're working on doesn't expose the resin and it cures. So this is a good way to save some of your favorite uh, UV resin colors that you create. Like there's so many times I over mix UV resin colors, so this will be a perfect way to save those colors that I make. Oh, oh, I remember this. This is supposed to be like a clay. Oh, it is kind of soft. It honestly feels like polymer clay to me. Um, but it's supposed to be a type of clay that you can kind of stretch. Maybe like cloud slime is a good way to describe it because it makes like fluffy looking clouds that you can put in the resin. Like here is a picture kind of of what you would use that clay for. Thankfully we got some UV resin because I am out. I have no UV resin at all. Um, so I'm really happy that we got some. And, whoa, ooh, this is like a little holographic. That is really pretty. We got these really pretty glitters. Oh, we got our molds. Um, so what you're supposed to do is make these little pieces here form a castle. Then you have some dragons with some fireballs. And then this is, I. it's really hard for me to say, an Auroraborus. Auroraborus. Um, Google can say it for you. Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Thank you, Google. What it is, you, if you're familiar with like the never ending story, it is, um, or the Wheel of Time, which I'm a big Wheel of Time fan. The It's the idea of a snake biting its own tail and it's like a never ending circle or a never ending cycle. And in this case, it's a dragon biting its own tail. Oh. Also, Full Metal Alchemist. It's in Full Metal Alchemist too. So the idea is that you build these and then you stick it into this, but I think I'm gonna do it a little bit different for today. I lied, not November, October. So sorry. <laughs> That's right, November was insects. So this is Tiny Fantasy. And again, what I always love about Liz's instruction books is she gives you instructions. She just gives you a really brief kind of list of everything you got and then the main bulk of her inserts are instructions which I really appreciate because I feel like no matter how much experience you might have with UV resin or resin projects sometimes molds need a little bit of guidance on how to use them especially for me because I'm such a visual person so I might be looking at a mold and have no idea what the heck I'm supposed to do so these are always so helpful and of course the QR code makes it even easier to find her instruction video. Okay, so now that we have that one all open, let's find out what's in the December box. This is the one that she curated based on what we, the creators, like to receive in our boxes. So I'm really interested to see what she put in here. Well, right off the bat is a big old mold. Well, I guess it's not big, it's just a lot of pieces. <gasps> Did she put mixing cups in here? That's amazing. I'm always looking for mixing cups. Okay, we'll look at that in a minute. I get distracted. I love molds, I get distracted by the molds. So let's start over. <laughs> Not only did we get pigment, but we got epoxy resin. And I need to know where she gets her epoxy resin from because seriously, th this might be my favorite one-to-one uh, -one resin. It always comes out super clear. There's very rarely any bubbles and it's really liquidy, which makes it so much easier to mix together and mix in pigments and glitter. Seriously, Liz, where do you get this from? 
Can you sell bigger bottles? Because I will buy them. Now with that, we got some um, apple green glow in the dark pigment and some royal blue transparent pigment, which means the transparent pigment we can use with UV resin. So that is awesome. Ooh, whoa. There's a lot going on in this thing. What's this? <laughs> what? Hold on. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we'll come back to all these glitters in a second. I just noticed the funniest thing in this. So first, I noticed some little like bead caps to for jewelry. So you put these on top of your finished projects and that way you can hang it. But the funniest what is this? Oh, they're in different positions too. Hold on, hold on. I've never seen this before. Look at this. It's people. It's little miniature people. I didn't expect that at all. So when I saw it in the little bag, kind of startled me actually <laughs> I was like what's looking at me what's looking at me in this little bag <laughs> that cracked me up that gave me a good laugh so let's open all of these glittery things there's a lot going on here I might need to look at the booklet to find out what these are but let's look at these really pretty colors first what I like actually is that these are kind of more basic colors. They're not anything too extreme, too crazy, so you can use these in a lot of projects, not very specific projects. Like you could use this for fantasy, you could use this for nature, you could use this for outer space, you could use this for under the ocean, you could use this just for basic jewelry. It's not any colors that you are too extreme or too vibrant or too crazy. But at the same time, they're still really glittery and really shimmery. Now, let me look at the booklet to see what these are. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. So this is the chameleon powder and I can already tell because it's kind of color shifting from like a white to like a mother of pearl kind of shimmery, uh, like a blue, purple, pink kind of color. This one is just called sugar. And so I'm assuming it's like super ultra fine. <gasps> That's so sparkly. It looks like snow and there's a lot of snow outside. So I got snow on the brain. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Very sparkly. It does look like sugar. Mm. So not only did we get a bunch of molds, but we also got some um, like inclusions. So let's look at that really quick. It looks like two little penguins. One looks like he's sliding on his tummy and one is standing up. They're bigger than the people. They are like monster penguins. They're like kaiju penguins. Look at this. They're bigger than the people. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of molds and now I understand why we have two different size people because we do have two different size snow globes. Um, we did get mixing cups, which I'm really happy about and it even comes with measurements, so yay. I am going to really have to look up her tutorial video to figure out how to do this. Like these are the bases of the snow globes and then these are the snow globes themselves. One looks like a fishbowl, like a typical snow globe. And then this one looks like, um, like a bottle, like a milk bottle, which actually is kind of a creative snow globe. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. These are the bases or the tops. I'm gonna have to figure out, I think this is gonna require that trick where you do UV resin and you twirl it while it's curing, which I am not the greatest at. Hmm. Okay, it's fine, everything's fine. Now this was the December subscriber's choice. That's what it was. That's a better way to describe it than how I was describing it. And then again, she gives us some information on the different things we got. And thankfully, of course, is the QR code so we can watch her tutorial video because I, I have, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so this is everything we got from the two boxes combined and Holy moly, I really have to wrap my head around 
all of this. There are so many things to work with. Initially, I thought I could do the dragon theme inside the snow globes, but I definitely underestimated how small, or overestimated, underestimated, how small the snow globes are. <laughs> I thought they would be bigger to fit the castles, and clearly they will not. Um, except for maybe like part of a castle. But seriously, there are so many, I don't even know where to start. Um, so I'm gonna sit and ponder and admire, especially these, the glitters are so pretty. Oh my gosh, they are gorgeous. Um, and we will see what I can come up with because I have a lot of ideas but I don't know if any of them will work. Let's get brewing. Well, Baby Bunny is busy coloring a picture right over here. <laughs> so you might hear some pencils moving, you might hear some coloring pages moving. She is just busy entertaining herself. Meanwhile, I'm going to tell you how I made this amazing dragon snow globe keychain. So in Liz's directions for these snow globes, she actually shows how to make them one solid piece, but I really wanted these to be a shaker, like an actual snow globe. So that meant I needed to make hollow bottles, um, bottles in the snow globe shape, which meant um, putting the resin in and swirling it around while it cures, which is really scary for me because I'm not that good at it. But I shouldn't judge myself too harshly because I did manage to do it this time. To make my own hollow bottle, I filled in some UV resin into the bottle mold just a little bit and swirled it around the edges. Then I poured out what I thought was too much resin, some of the excess. Then I set up my UV flashlight on my desk and held the mold over the flashlight while rotating it really slow to make sure that the resin coated all of the edges. Then, to make sure the bottom was coated as well, I poured in some more UV resin, just a thin layer, and cured the bottom as well. And just to make sure it's extra, extra cured, I put the whole thing under my big UV light, and I cured that for about a minute. Now when I made my bottle mold, I didn't fill up all the way to the top where the edge of the bottle or the top of the bottle is. So I did that separately, kind of following that same technique. I poured in some of my UV resin just around the rim of the bottle mold and twirled it and cured it under my UV light. And it didn't really come out that great. There's some pockets where I didn't get any UV resin, but I'm not super concerned about it because this is gonna be the top of the shaker. No oil is gonna go by where this opening is, so I'm not worried about it leaking. Liz also included four different molds for the bases of the snow globes, but they also actually can double as lids or stoppers for the snow globes as well. So I filled up a few of them just halfway with some clear UV resin. Then I found the size that matched the top of the lid and I fit it inside and then sealed the whole thing with UV resin. So then that way when I'm all done, I can put this on top of the bottle and then seal it and then that way no oil is gonna leak out. So for the castle, I was originally gonna do the castle that had kind of a pointed um, top or like pointed roofs because I think that looks the most like a fantasy castle to me. Um, kind of like Disneyland actually, that's probably what I was channeling. But I tried a few different times and I kept breaking off the spires. So I decided, never mind. <laughs> so instead I filled up the smallest square shaped castle with clear UV resin and popped that out. And you can see that one of the tops or one of the turrets didn't get filled in all the way so it kind of looks damaged. But that's totally fine because I can work with that. And I did clear UV resin because I ended up painting this. I painted it with a gray color. Then I dry brushed some brown and green like vines onto the castle as well. So it looks a little um, destroyed or maybe it had been in a battle. I wanted it to look a little messed up because that one turret was missing. So it kind of worked out. It's not a turret, it's a battlement. What's the top of a castle called? Not a turret, a battlement. I think it's called a battlement. 
Here, let me go get my phone. I need to look up what that's called. A battlement! Look at me! I am completely inadvertently testing my knowledge from my undergrad, which focused on medieval and renaissance lit. So this is really testing my memory of what castles are called. <laughs> now my finishing touch for this castle is to add some black detailing for the door or the drawbridge, and also for the windows at the top, which are the balustria. Balustraria. Balustraria. Girl, look at me with my knowledge. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> my memory. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Or arrow slits, but arrow slit sounds weird. So, balustraria. If you're like me and you love fantasy books, movies, TV shows, or fantasy creatures like dragons, griffins, unicorns, anything like that, then you would fit right in with the Coffee Bean family. You should subscribe so you can become a Coffee Bean too. And make sure you click that notification bell so you don't lose me to the big wide world of YouTube. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now it's time to put my castle inside the bottle, but I want to make sure it stays in place. So I mixed up some green UV resin with some yellow and blue colorant and put that at the <laughs> Then I placed in my castle and cured it under my UV light. For my dragon, I mixed up some of the red chameleon flakes with some UV resin and put that in the smallest dragon mold and cured that under my light. And I also mixed up some of the gold or yellow holographic glitter that came from the subscriber's choice box. And I put that in the like fire, I almost said I want a fire bolt, but fire bolt doesn't make sense. That's Harry Potter. No wonder I wanted to say fire bolt. <laughs> in the flame, in the fire breath, in the fire breathing thing shooting out of the dragon's mouth. That's where I put the yellow glitter. <laughs> and I cured that under my UV light. Then I added a little bit of red chameleon flakes with some UV resin and then just dipped it in the red chameleon flakes. So it added a little bit of dimension to the fireball. Fireball! That's what I was trying to say, fireball. Then I attached the fireball to the dragon with a little dot of UV resin. Then to add to the kind of destroyed look of this castle, I added my dragon with his fireball inside the bottle. So it looks like he's swooping down on the castle and I attached that with UV resin and then I cured the whole thing under my UV light. To finish the shaker, I added some glitter and jewels and like little diamonds and some gold flakes because it's supposed to kind of look like a dragon's treasure hoard. Then I added some baby oil. and sealed the top of the bottle with some UV resin. I made sure to add several layers of UV resin to really make sure that this oil was not going to drip out anywhere. I was really nervous that there was a hole somewhere, but I ended up getting any of the holes and air bubbles covered. Now I really wanted there to be a cork at the top of my bottle, but I don't have any actual corks that are this size. So I put some clear UV resin into the medium sized base mold and cured that. Then painted it with a dark brown and then sponged on some light brown so it kind of looks like a cork. <laughs> then I attached that to the top of the bottle with some more UV resin. Then to seal everything, I applied my UV varnish all over the bottle and the cork and cured it under my UV light. I still felt like the bottle was kind of missing something, so I decided to mix up some more of those red chameleon flakes with UV resin and put that in the big dragon mold. Then once that was all cured, I attached it with more UV resin to the side of the bottle so it looks like he's kind of crawling on the side of the bottle. I happen to have these little bottles from a previous Craft Kitsune kit and I filled it up with some more little diamonds and gems and jewels, again kind of like a dragon's treasure hoard, and I attached that with a cork and a screw eye pin. Then I attached everything to a keychain. I am so happy with how this keychain turned out. It ended up looking amazing. I love it so much. It looks like a little tiny fantasy environment in a little milk bottle. How cute is that? 
Plus, I love that I had these little tiny, tiny bottles to add the jewels to so it can kind of hang on the side. I think this would be so cute on a bag or a purse, especially if you're going traveling like to Disneyland or the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal Studios. It's just a really cool little charm to have on your bag. And it does work like a snow globe. When you tilt it upside down and right again, all of the glitter and flakes kind of spiral around. Plus the glitter floating around in the oil kind of looks like embers from the castle that's on fire. So <laughs> kind of Game of Thrones-esque with that one. <laughs> but it still looks really, really cool. If you like this project and you wanna make your own, then make sure you check my description down below. I do have a link for a Craft Kitsune box so you could get your own. You can get $5 off your first box if you use the code BUNNYDIY. So make sure you check it out. Now, coffee beans. I have some really exciting news. It's a little different. It's a little different. So in four weeks, the first week of February, I am going on vacation. My husband and I are going to Disneyland. That is like our home away from home. A little part of my heart lives at Disneyland. It is literally, quite literally, my favorite place on earth. I think it's the happiest place on earth for me. It really genuinely is. Now, I know that's not very exciting for you, but originally I was just not going to make a video for that week. And I was kind of talking to my husband about it and he came up with the best idea. So you guys have him to thank for this because I was gonna be lazy and not do a video. Meanwhile, he thought of this amazing idea. For the next four weeks, including today, you guys can ask me any question. Any question, could be related to crafts, could be related to resin, could be related to my hair, could be related to my tattoo, anything anything and I will choose the top 10 questions while I am in Disneyland and I will answer any of those questions and the top 10 that I choose will get a special gift from me in the mail it'll be something that I've made on this channel and you can have it for yourself and out of those 10 I will choose one lucky winner who will get something from Disneyland, from me personally. So if that sounds like something you would love to kind of be a part of, then make sure you get started asking any question you can think of. You can ask down in the comments below, or you can ask on my Instagram. Um, you can DM me on Instagram, or you can ask on any of my pictures. And my Instagram is bunnydiy. Again, everyone, Happy New Year. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy you're here too. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Love you a latte.